Hi everyone, Robert here. My friend Empress Song invited me to take part in this thread, 54321, and I really like it. I think it's a really nice opportunity to give you a kind of overview of my tastes in all things tarot. So I've got some really nice decks, some amazing books lined up for you, some, some good spreads, and a surprise at the end. So here we go. Okay, everyone. Well, um, the theme of the five tarot decks that I've chosen for this video is, I would say, art tarots, by which I mean tarot decks in which one really feels that this is an art project in which the, the artistic side is, is very, very strongly represented. Now, I've assembled five decks that I think have the signature of the artist very strongly on them. And I actually don't think that they are the best decks to read with. But hey, they're really worth looking at and um, they're not to be dismissed. And, and you might feel that one of these is for you. So here we have a, an amazing thing called the New American Tarot by a guy called David Aaron Smith, who I came across on Instagram. And he had a very funny introductory video in which he was sort of like sending himself up a bit and, and claiming to be sort of incredibly sexy and gorgeous and seductive. But on top of that, he is, <laughs> I think, um, if I may say so. David. I have reviewed this tarot deck and I'm critical of it because I disagree in a sense with the design decisions that the artist has made. But I still think it's one of the most stunning um, art tarots that I've come across. So here on the back, you get a clue as to what's going on. And, and actually on the box you do as well. He has taken batons, cups, swords and coins, and he has turned them into planks of wood, water bottles, guns, and tablets. And by tablets, he means, you know, computers, iPads. And you can, you can hear what I have to say about this in, in my video. I can't relate to this updating of the four suits in that way. Although I completely relate to the idea of making a modern tarot deck. And what he's done is he's, he's sort of pulled the tarot right up into the modern world and it's just very extraordinary. The colours are great. The, the artwork is wild. He says in his video that he, he got a copy of the Rider Waite Smith. And, you know, he, he joked a bit about the fact that his name is Smith. And so he's a cousin, theoretically speaking, of, of Pamela Coleman Smith. And he then he, he, he got some tracing paper and he traced these designs. I mean, at least he's honest about it because a lot of people do trace the Rider Waite Smith, don't they? Then he went off on his own trip. So you can see that there is each card has the sort of the ghost of the Rider Waite Smith behind it. These references become a little <clears throat> less clear in the court cards. You know, the King of Wands, it's roughly the same position as in the Rider Waite Smith. When he gets to the Knights, he has to dispense with the horses. And so the, the in a sense, um, the memory of the Rider Waite Smith, the print through, really more or less is lost. But I think... Look, Queen of Queen of Boards there with, you know, with the cat and the sunflower. It's really nice. And look at that. I mean, it, it's it's just so beautifully drawn. And I'm a bit sad that I that I can't relate to his new versions of the suits because I think you know the the colours are absolutely ravishing, and the major arcana is really really good. I'm, I'm looking for it at the moment. Look at those colours there. <laughs> But the Major Arcana is fabulous. And so, you know, I could use this as a Major Arcana only deck um, without any problems at all. So that's the New American Tarot by David Aaron Smith. Next up is a deck for which I have much affection. It's called The Hidden Message and it's a collage tarot. And you know what? I don't usually like collage tarots. But with this one, this one I adore. It's by a French artist called Julien Paco. And um, it's, again, it's quite respectful it's, uh, to the Rider Waite Smith. He says that he's not a tarot reader himself. But, you know, I think, I think artists and designers find tarot a very, a very interesting challenge, don't they? He's collaged images here, sort of, you know, kitschy, surrealist collages, aren't they? using mostly post-war images, but, you know, pre-war and mid-war as well. Um, I mean, that one, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a mixture, isn't it? Because this image looks like um, Edwardian, 
but those ladies look like 70s. So yeah, I, I find collage decks a little bit difficult to read with because of the because there's photographic content and that brings me too much into the real world. But this deck, I kind of make an exception with every now and then because the images that he comes up with are so surreal that it does bring you into the dream world. And, you know, um, it does work rather nicely as a tarot. So that is the, the rather wonderful Hidden Message Tarot by Julien Paco. And you can, you can get that online. Next up, a rather extraordinary and ravishing deck by an artist called Félix Deon. And he publishes this. He's a Mexican guy, a Mexican-American. He publishes this deck under his Mexican name. And his Mexican name is that. And it comes in a, an, amazing, an amazing presentation. You get a gorgeous bag. You get an extraordinarily gorgeous book, gorgeously printed in English and Spanish. And the whole thing is, you know, kind of affordable. You'd expect it to cost £100, but it doesn't. I think it probably costs 50 or something. I have reviewed this. This is a present I gave to my husband, so I'm borrowing it back for your edification. So it's not mine. I don't use it. I'm not the sort of person who gives presents and then <laughs> snatches them back. I, I've reviewed it. I, I think it's a, a complicated deck in some ways. It is uh, Rider Waite Smith based. You see uh, Felix Dayon on Instagram and so forth and, and Twitter, and you see him uh, reading tarot cards with his friends, and you get the impression that he is um, a Rider Waite Smith um, oriented reader. And if you you look at these cards, you find that they are quite close to Rider Waite Smith. Certainly the Pip cards, and to some extent the Court cards. The major arcana get get more complicated, and it it does become more difficult to see who is who. I mean, but if you, you know if if you bought this deck, for example, here we have La Purification, and here we have El Sol, and we have La Luna. I mean, what I mean by complicated is that that the the images in some of the major arcana arcana cards are they're more dense, they're more loaded up. Whereas some of the major arcana and, and most of the minor arcana, it's, it's quite, they're, they're clear, they're beautiful, uh, and they're a real pleasure. Look, there's the, there's the his equivalent of, of the two of rods, his equivalent of the four, his equivalent of the ten. So we have a mixture of European esoteric tarot imagery and indigenous Mexican spirituality. And, and that's what you get with this deck. And it really is extremely special if you want to, to deal with it. It's also a queer deck, so you get quite a lot of fun with the male body, if fun is the right word. So that is the amazing tarot, Yohuali Ehe Cattle from Felix Deon. Highly, highly recommended. Next up is a deck that I would have to say is in the running for my, my favourite deck of all time. Again, not a deck that I read with all the time, Radomil Boguslavsky's Ocoli Occultati Tarot. The reason why I don't read with it all the time is because it's so bloody big. I have quite big hands, ladies and gentlemen, but I can hardly pick it up. It's really big and, um, you know, one, one really hopes that they are going to uh, swallow their pride, the, the artist and the publisher, and make a smaller version one day. Because I think if it was smaller, it would, it would be a, a, a great bestseller. I, I saw it in, in, um, in Watkins Books in London um, and I, I lingered over it for, for, I think, like a year. Every time I went back to London, I went to Watkins and, and had another look at it. And I think what, you know, what was bothering me was, was the size. I mean, the, the major arcana here, you see, the, that's the fool. The major arcana are, are monochrome and, you know, they're gorgeous. But they're 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 quite doomy. It's like a sort of slightly nightmarish dream landscape that he's 
gone into for his major arcana. Look, there's, there's the sun, rather a, 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 like a sad, sort of premature child on the horse there. Um, but I think as he went on with his designs, he became more sort of sensual and sexy and it becomes queerer and queerer, actually. He sort of, he just decides, OK, I, I'm, I'm basically going to draw men and unless it's unless it's a queen and and it becomes like the, the court cards have become very 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 baroque and 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 very glorious so i've i've done a full review of this it it is a sensational deck and and when, as soon as i reviewed it and, and told my friends about it it immediately sold out and went out of print so that's my fault ladies and gentlemen but you know if they've got any sense uh, they will reprint it and, and maybe do a smaller version. So there you go, Ockley Occultati by Radomil Bogoslovsky. And now finally, as a kind of a humorous PS, I'd like to just mention the Carl W. Rurig tarot, because Carl W. Rurig is a successful and, um, what's the word? Well, successful, I suppose, artist. I believe this tarot comes from the old days. Yeah, copyright 1993. This is a tarot deck that I that I strongly dislike. I'm avoiding the word detest, ladies and gentlemen. It's based on the Thoth, which is already for me a bad start. As I've said in my rather waspish review of this tarot, um, it reminds me of the sort of calendars that you see hanging on the wall in all male workspaces. Um, you know, it, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, don't get me started. I'm not even going to say anything. Uh, it's just got, it's just got, you know, ladies in skimpy underwear. It's just got breasts appearing out of nowhere in, in the cosmic space. And then it's very surrealistic and, and cosmic. The reason why it's in this video is because, I mean, these drawings are kind of sensational in a way. Some people love this tarot deck and um, it has its place, albeit a strange one, in the history of tarot. Uh, there's one card that I like. Look, it's that. I think it's quite good. Um, but I think the way he, he draws women is there's a, there's a difference between the way he draws women and the, the way he draws men. The men seem to be somehow um, present, whereas the women seem to be just like just all made up of of of, of makeup and and just the occasional breast and um it won't do will it really ladies and gentlemen but 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 these images are you know i could zoom in they are really highly highly um finished obsessively worked over you know and if you like that sort of thing then the Carl W. Rurich deck is for you. Okay? That concludes my five tarot decks for today. Okay, everyone, well, let's do four tarot books. And considering this is in my collection, this fantastic Tashan tarot book by Jessica Hundley, I couldn't not show it to you in this video. It's just too lovely. Everyone should know about it. Look, it's completely lavish. The Tarot, author Jessica Hundley, design Thunderwing, essays from Penny Slinger, Johannes Fiebig, and Marcella Kroll, and it's Tashin. So basically, this is a fabulous big picture book, all about tarot design. It's, it, it's a coffee table book, but it's also, it's for you tarot fiends out there, for you to feast your eyes on. You know, if you're relatively new to tarot, there are some essays at the beginning explaining what tarot is, where it comes from and so forth. This is my German edition, but Taschen's very clever. They bring out the same book in, I think, you know, three or four different languages. So you've got a little essay showing where tarot design comes from. Uh, nothing new here, but, but the pictures are great. And how it goes into RWS and then how it progresses from there. The, the book's an absolute treasure trove. You know, it's got it's got um, extracts from, from tarot packs that you can get, tarot packs that you really can't get. You know, you could only ever get a few copies of them back in the 60s or something. 
It's got very cutting edge stuff. Look, it's got here Alexander Danilov's 2012 tarot, um, which I've reviewed, which I have a copy of. It's got stuff from Felix Deon. So they're really, they've done a lot, a hell of a lot of research. And it's just about the beauty of tarot. There's, look, there's Felix Deon, which I also have just talked about. Look, and there's the Aquarian tarot. So it's just all about the beauty of it, really. Um, and which is, I think, what Tashin's about. So look, and there's the Rurik tarot. So if there's a tarot fiend in your life who deserves a, a rather ooh la Christmas present, uh, this is the book. Oh, look, and there's the, the Neo Tarot, which I can't stand. Um, yeah, if there's a tarot fiend in your life, or if it's just you, treat yourself. You won't look back. Now, from a very mainstream thing to a very to a very niche thing. I was researching a book which I'm writing on the tarot and I was researching the court cards because they had always bothered me and I was in Watkins and I came across this book. Look, it's very, very slim. Studies on Mystical Tarot, The Court Cards by Yolanda M. Robinson. Yolanda M. Robinson is a bit of a, a Kabbalist and I'm not terribly drawn to Kabbalah. Look, there's the, the Tree of Life there. But she's also very much an RWS commentator and she's incredibly sensitive and she's incredibly poetic. And she really probably gave me more inspiration about the RWS court cards than any other writer I've come across. It's a modest book. It's about 80, 85 pages. It's clearly written. It's not, what's the word? It's not one of these books that goes on and on and on because it's in love with its own voice. She just says what she's got to say. She's an academic. She, she lectures in tarot. I think she might be in South America. And there's great depth and there's great brilliance in this book. So if you can get hold of it, um, I highly recommend it. I, 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 have, a, I have a feeling it might be self-published, but it's clearly, you know, like, like many books these days, it's clearly available online. So, you know, give that a go. Going slightly off piste here. Here's a book that I got probably in the 90s, Numerology and the Divine Triangle. It's not specifically a tarot book, but it has tarot in it. It refers to tarot. It's by Faith Javan and Dusty Bunker. And this is, this is a great classic of numerology. It's much loved and it's still available. It's still in print. I, I've looked online. You can still get it. So what um, the authors do is they talk about numbers and, and the significance of numbers and they relate each number to a tarot card and to an astrological uh, deacon. And this is this is really, really interesting. I actually think that these correspondences between tarot and numerology and astrology, they're a bit tricky. They don't always work um, because these systems don't entirely link up with each other. And sometimes you do come across contradictions. But these writers are so genuinely sensitive and inspired that it's a great pleasure to read the book. And, you know, if there's anything in it which doesn't quite sort of um, chime with what you feel about a certain number or a certain card, you can just move on. But they're, again, they're not dogmatic. They're lovely writers. And I found much in this book that was helpful. And I, I've, been, I've been referring to this book for numerology advice for many, many years. Now, for my final book, I want to go sort of 90, 99% off piece because this isn't a tarot book by any stretch of the imagination. And, and actually tarot, the word tarot, I think is not mentioned once in this book. But look at this. I got it in a secondhand bookshop. It's Seth Speaks. It's, it's, well, it's the first main Seth book to come out. And it's from the 70s. It's written by Jane Roberts, uh, channeling the entity known as Seth. And I've never read the Seth books before. And I, 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 I knew that I wanted to read something like this. I, I had an intuition that I was looking for something like this, this kind of um, psychic information. And I found this in our local secondhand bookshop for like one euro or something. An original copy in, with original 70s graphics and so, so original that it, it, it felt a bit as I read it. 
Now, the reason why I'm recommending this to you is because I think if we if we're not mincing words here, reading tarot is about it is a psychic activity. I believe it's something that everyone can do. But you might as well you might as well call a spade a spade. You you are you are doing this in order to pick up information from other parts of your consciousness, other vibrations. You could say other dimensions. And that's really what the Seth books are about. The Seth voice, Jane Roberts's Seth voice, is an extremely respectful, humorous, uh, loving uh, voice, claiming to come from another dimension and claiming to have knowledge which which we don't have. But it's it's not sort of pompous. It's not handed down from the mountain like you know, A Course in Miracles or something like that. It's kind of, as I say, it's it's very palatable. And Seth's messages that, you know, we are all connected to a higher entity, which is our, our complete, our complete selves in a higher dimension. And, and the part of us that is that is in incarnation on Earth is just a part of our totality. And we have a bigger identity sort of up there or through there or however you, you want to look at it. And so these Seth books are really all about this Seth voice giving us advice as to how we can be more in touch with our bigger, our bigger brains, our bigger consciousness, our, our bigger entity. And a lot of that is to do, Seth says, with being available to our experiences in the dream state, because that is when we, that is when we go into the, the other dimensions. And um, Seth says that if you that you 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 form your life through your beliefs. So if you have the belief that your dreams can give you information, then you are opening yourself up to that information. If you have the belief that that, that you can grow and increase your your intuitive powers or, or your psychic abilities, that opens you up to that natural process. So I, I'm very excited about this book, but I, I do think it's a good recommendation for tarot readers because it kind of gives you a, a wider context, a sort of a wider philosophical sort of framework so that you can grow and understand what you're doing as a tarot reader. OK, ladies and gentlemen, let's do three spreads. And these are the three spreads I use most often. And I think two of them I invented myself. But this first one that I want to show you is so simple that I, I can't really uh, take very much credit for inventing anything. I call it my um, what's my issue spread. And I invented it supposedly when I wanted a spread that would help me on days when I didn't really know why I felt strange or difficult or just dissatisfied when I didn't know how to approach the day. So I said to the tarot, well, what is my issue? And then that was card number one. So in this case, perhaps the, the issue would be I, I want to feel more safe. Then the second card goes up here. And the second card was, in a sense, me asking the tarot's advice. How can I best go about um, dealing with this energy, correcting or healing this energy or, or, or just working with it? I then decided that maybe there could be more than one advice cards. I went up to three and recently I've gone down to two again. So let's see what it might be in this case. OK, King of Pentacles and Three of Rods. Well, in order to feel more safe, it looks like I need to <laughs> look for an investor and do a bit of business. It's that kind of thing. It's incredibly simple. And it's this spread that I use in my weekly and monthly readings. Another spread I use a lot. I got, I think, from Barbara Moore. It's a basic relationship spread and I use it um, when I'm about to go into some kind of meeting or if I'm about to work with someone in, in some kind of context. So it is relationship. It, it's, it's me, the other person, and it's the meeting. So um, it's just incredibly simple. So that's where I'm coming from. That's where the other person is coming from. And that is the likely result of the meeting. No matter how accurate this might be or how well or, or badly you read it, the really good thing about this, this spread is it, it takes you out of your ego and it slightly jolts you out of any um, stories or fantasy that you might be telling yourself about the meeting.
it sort of jolts you out of your normal train of thought and it sort of forces you to focus on the fact that you are coming from a certain place, the other person is a person coming from their lives with all their issues and all their stresses and all their stories. And the meeting could go a hundred different ways. So it's kind of, it sort of makes you more respectful and open about the meeting. And of course, if you're doing it well, you might pick up something about the meeting that, that's coming up. I also found that if this card was a bad card, like an undesirable card, I mean, that looks pretty good, uh, the Eight of Battens. But if it was, you know, if it was that five of swords you might say oh that's not a very good outcome for this meeting and then you might ask the tarot for an advice how can i correct that probable outcome and in that case i would put another card at the top and so okay in that case it would be you know be creative or something like that the other spread which i definitely invented um even though it's a variation on, on the 12th house spread is one that i also use every month in my monthly readings and it goes like this you put down your 12 cards and yes it is possible to jam them into your screen if you're a bit creative about it now the thing is the clever thing about this is i'm only interested in the position of upright major arcana and aces i'm going to hide everything else now i said i'm only interested in upright major arcana and aces so that doesn't count that hermit okay so i have upright major arcana and aces in the third and the seventh house now furthermore i am not reading the face value of these cards i don't care that that's temperance and i don't care that that is the ace of wands i've asked the tarot just to tell me which houses are aspected so i'm only going to say third and seventh are aspected now by aspected i've, I've taken this word from astrology uh, i'm not an astrologer but what i mean is where is the energy in the next week, the next month, the next 48 hours, whatever I've agreed with the tarot. And when I see that the third and the seventh houses are indicated in this spread, what I'm hearing from the tarot is that I should expect these houses to be in some way important in the agreed time frame. So I could do nothing and they would be important or I could go with the flow. So for example, in this case, if the third house is important in the next time frame, it could mean that I would do well to kind of regularly check my emails, which I don't always do. I don't like emails. <laughs> I find them stressful and sometimes I let them slide. Equally, if the seventh house is aspected, I almost always take that as an indication that, that my relationship is important and that it requires extra attention and I should make sure that my partner's okay during this time frame. Equally, it could have been, you know, if, if the second house was aspected, I would check my bank balance and make sure that, that, you know, that my lodger had paid the rent. If the fourth house was aspected, I would clean the flat and so on. Now, that's definitely uh, my spread and I'm very pleased with it and I find it unbelievably helpful. By the way, I call it the weather forecast spread and I've, I've made a video explaining it. Okay, two pieces of tarot paraphernalia. Well, there's this, this is a, a beautiful color. It's one of my tarot tablecloths. It's the, the one I've had for longest. I bought this piece of, of raw pink silk in Florence in the old days when I was a baby tarot reader of 17. In fact, I probably hadn't even started reading tarot when I bought this. And I put it away in a drawer thinking that I would have it made into a shirt one day. <laughs> but you know, not everything turns out the way you think it's going to turn out. And it's my tarot tablecloth. Um, next up, this is um, part of a costume that my husband Akin made for a trip to the Cologne Carnival in uh, just a long, long time ago. And he went with a group of friends and they all dressed up as choir boys. And um, it's just a piece of... Akim is, is brilliant, a brilliant costume maker, by the way. And it's a piece of um, fur fabric, which has been cut with a pair of scissors, and it's got two bits of elastic in it. And when I started this channel, I decided that I wanted to have, you know, a persona. I think the mask frees us up to be ourselves. And so I went for a kind of Warhol look. And this is... It's clearly not really a wig. 
it's a headpiece. Um, I think that uh, I think that a little bit of ceremony is is called for in 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 divination, and um, that's mine. So you be you're very privileged to see that, ladies and gentlemen. I, I thought that I would keep it as a as a little a little beauty secret, but there I'm, I'm revealing my my secrets today. And here is one tarot card that I would like to embody, also an energy I would like to, to wish for anyone to have in their lives. Um, this is my, my colouring of the Knight of Pentacles. The Knight of Pentacles is protective, vigilant, loyal and capable. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have a Knight of Pentacles of either gender in your life. And um, I hope you find the inspiration to be the Knight of Pentacles for someone else, if you choose. That's all from me. I'll be back, same bat time, same bat channel next week. If you have anything to, to say about the, the, the decks and the books I've been talking about, the comments are open as they always are. See you next week. Bye.